How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today we're going to look at how to indirectly invest in crude oil. A little disclaimer here, whatever I recommend, you really need to check with your financial advisor before you go buy or sell anything. I'm presenting a lot of information here and you can process it yourself and decide if you really want to buy something or not because this is an asset. It is the stock market which will either appreciate in value or depreciate. There's no guarantees here. Now investing in a commodity is kind of difficult because you have to have a special type of account and not just a regular brokerage account. So I just use my regular brokerage account and buy an energy ETF called IXC which tracks the energy index. It has a lot of different companies in it that it's gasoline related, oil refining related. So it somewhat tracks the price of crude oil pretty well. So it's uh, pretty liquid so I can buy and sell it anytime I want and that's the preferred method for me. So to cut to the chase, I actually bought some IXC and the rest of this video is really about analyzing crude oil and kind of projecting where it's gonna go in the future. Of course, we really don't know where it's gonna go, so this is just an analysis. And I'm gonna give you this information and you can decide on your own. Crude oil was hovering around $100 a barrel and now it dropped all, all the way down to 30. One of the major factors is that the US is doing this fra uh, hydraulic fracking thing where in a really long time, the United States hasn't really produced any oil for a really long time. And all of a sudden it's pumping all this oil into the market and it's essentially oversupplying the market. Take a step back and we gotta understand that crude oil actually makes gasoline, which is the major component. It also makes jet fuel. And it also makes a lot of different plastics that we use, everything around us that's made out of plastic. On top of that, they derive chemicals out of gasoline and it's actually in a lot of our foods. Yes, we actually eat some of the crude oil. So now we know we have a lot of demand for crude oil because it goes in everything that we even eat or use. The world population is increasing and so there's always going to be a higher and higher demand of crude oil. If you just look at the world population, it's going up. Therefore, the demand for crude oil is gonna go up as well. It's kind of looking something like this. The thing to know is if you draw a line of supply over this land line of demand, if it's over, there's oversupply. If it's under, it's undersupply. It tends to look something like this. It's, it gets oversupplied, undersupplied. It try to hovers around whatever demand there is in the world. And so in the crude oil industry, it always goes through these cycles. And right now it's in this really terrible low down cycle. And we're gonna try to take advantage of this by investing in energy. So what I think the cycle is right now, it's something like right over here. There's way too much supply because of the hydraulic fracking in the United States, as well as um, I think Iran's uh, sanctions are lifted. So they're supplying the world with oil as well before they weren't. On top of that, Saudi Arabia actually noticed that the United States is pumping more and more oil out. They're producing more. And so they're getting pissy and, and trying to control the market. They're trying to squash out all the people that are pumping in the United States because it costs them a certain amount in order to pump. So then they're purposely oversupplying the market and making the price purposely low, cause a whole bunch of oil exploration businesses to go out of business. And so they would, they would close down and so the supply would go down a little bit. Once they've squashed out the expensive producers, of course the oil price is gonna come back up. The thing is, my estimate is that it may not quite go back to $100 per barrel because once it goes back that high, the US producer is gonna jump right back in and try to do the hydraulic fracking again. Of course, it's gonna leave a bad taste in their mouth because they, they realize that if too many producers go in, Saudi Arabia is just gonna come back and oversupply the market again and squash them out. So the people, the, the banks that's lending to these, uh, these companies that are doing the exploration, they're gonna be a little edgy about lending to them because you know they, they kinda went through one time of uh, defaults already. So it's gonna be a little bit higher. It's gonna bounce back uh, quite a bit before the hydraulic fracking can start up again. One thing to note is hydraulic fracking has low amount of output compared to regular oil extractors. 
they need to keep on drilling in order to get more oil. I think we're at this part here. If it's over the, the demand line, it's going to be oversupplied, which means it's going to depreciate the price down. Once there's not that much supply, the price will come back up. The time horizon for this investment, is, I think it's about two to five years. So you can think of buying into this as a way to hedge your gasoline price. Right now it's cheap, so you buy into it cheap. When it increases, you can then sell that asset and then pay for the expensive gasoline. The thing is, I don't know where the oil price is gonna go, but right now it's pretty cheap and I believe that it's gonna come back up. At least it will recover a little bit. One of the arguments against oil price coming back up is because of electric cars. If you have more electric cars, there'll be less and less vehicles, number of vehicles that uses gasoline. And it doesn't take all that much of less demand in gasoline in order to uh, change the supply and demand curve. If there's just a little bit less usage, there might be overproduction and hence the price of oil would, kept, would be kept low. My argument against that is electric cars are not that big right now. They may get bigger, but I don't think it's gonna get back, it's gonna be very popular just yet. It's just starting to ramp up and it needs maybe five, at least five years for it to really gain traction with most consumers. If you factor in the price of the battery, the total ownership of the car, it's actually more expensive to drive an electric car than a gasoline car. Of course, there's the environmental aspect. You really want the electric car because it's better for the environment. But even that argument is a little off because some people argue, well, where do you get the electricity from? How do you generate it, etc. Unless you, you know, get all the electricity from solar panels, which is not feasible. Let's not go there. The thing is, I'm thinking the electric cars actually won't get too popular just yet. It will, but you need um, better battery technology, which you know you can argue Tesla is doing this, blah 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 blah. My argument is that yes, it won't it won't come back up that quick, and there will always be demand for oil. People need gasoline to drive. People need gasoline. Uh, crude oil to make plastics. People always need more plastic goods. You see all the factories making all this stuff. All There's so many products that's derived from crude oil. And you can count on our need for crude oil to keep at its pace. There's not gonna be that many things that can replace it. You can talk about like corn-based uh, plastics or something like that, but those are not really replacing our core usage of crude oil just yet. I believe IXC was hovering around $50 and then it kind of dropped along with crude oil all the way down to $25 and then it came back up. Right now it's about $30. My projection is about a 50% increase in 5 years. So that's 10% a year roughly. And on top of that, if you, if you buy this uh, stock, you also get about a 5% dividend. 15% compounded annual growth rate is pretty good for over on this short five year term. Of course, I might be wrong. It might, it might actually go lower. I don't know. That's my gut feeling of after analyzing it and looking at you know the dynamics of everything, weighing in electric cars, weighing in uh, what Saudi Arabia is trying to do. I really think they're probably able to do it. They, 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 they're playing hardball here because they're staying firm with oversupplying the market. They're, they, they normally supply the market a certain amount. They refuse to lower the price in order to stabilize the price. Saudi Arabia used to be in that position where if the price fluctuate, they would adjust their supply accordingly in order to stabilize the price. But this time around, they're not. They, they're really playing hardball. And my thinking is that they're playing hardball for a good reason. And if I were in their position, I'd probably do the same because if they know that if they oversupply the market, they're going to squelch out those hydraulic fracking business things and then they can enjoy a high oil price for you know years longer and if those ever come back online they're going to do it again you know it's going to go up and down they need the crude oil amount to be a certain level 
in order to balance their, their country's budget. Now, they have a good stockpile of money, but that stockpile of money will run out if they extend this for too long. So they can do it for a good duration, five years maybe, of, of pushing it low. But I don't think they're going to keep it low that long. Because I think if Saudi Arabia keeps their supply really high and the price of crude oil low for even maybe one more year, those hydraulic fracking guys are probably going to give up and they can finally raise their price again. It's going to go trickle back up. With those things in mind, you can decide on your own if investing in crude oil is a good thing or not. For me, I actually did buy some IXC. My target for that is, is for it to increase by 35 to 50 percent within two to five year time frame. I hope this video is informative in that it'll help you decide on your own if um, investing in crude oil is something that you want to do. Please don't just take my word for it, do your own analysis because there's a disclaimer, I had a disclosure before, <laughs> don't listen to me. I'm only presenting the information here for you. And you gotta also spot check my information also because I'm kind of doing this hand waving thing, oh, oil here, up, down. Do your own fact checking. I'm actually personally invested in it. And so you can see that um, I do believe in what I am saying. So it's about March 2016 right now. I like to come back to this video two to five years from now and see if I'm actually correct in my prediction. Prediction is kind of fun. So I did do my due diligence in order to try to minimize the risks there. It is an ETF fund, which is a aggregate of many different companies, not just one single company. I'm recommending one single uh, ticker, although that ticker is a combination, a component of many different companies. So the risk there is somewhat distributed, but if oil, crude oil prices keep on staying low, which I think has a really, really low chance of doing, uh, you could lose value in whatever you invest. So beware of that. I hope this video helps you. Don't forget to click like, comment down below if you agree or disagree to my analysis. And don't forget to subscribe over here. Thanks for watching.